no more. It's like you're not living the life of Riley, but you're doing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? And he said, when you get in that, remember, you know, just just put a check on your heart. Don't let you don't forget me. Don't forget that you didn't get there by yourself. Isn't that right? I did it for you. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Now we are going to go to the Word of God and we want to share some things that... Um, I pray to the Lord that it will be a help to all of us, something that God made aware, me aware of, and my true, true chiefest desire is that uh, it will really help us today uh, to just to, in, in insight and understanding um, and bring about a wonderful change for God's glory. So we ask that you please open your heart. And open your spiritual ears to hear what the Lord is saying to us so that we can be the recipients. So if you will turn to Matthew 7 and stand with me, if you will, I would appreciate it. This is going by way of television. And our, our precious sister, we will let her give a testimony after the word. Okay, I believe uh, I remember my wife telling me that. After the word, then I'm going to, yes, call on you to give a word of testimony. She, thank you. All right, <clears throat> beginning at verse 1, I'll read one and then we'll read the second one together. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment, <laughs> judgment you judge, judge you shall, shall be judged. judged and, and with what, what measure you meet, it shall, shall be measured to you, you again. again. Amen. Father, we just so thank you for the word. And I just really ask that you'll open it up so we can see what we haven't seen before. Lord, let it make us better for your glory. Your aim and your goal, oh God, is for us to become Christ-like. So this is our goal as well. So we thank you for the body. Thank you for those by web television, Lord. Let it just minister life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I know that if you hear this, you may say, wow, that's not, no, that's not a real revelation. But I, I want to share with you. Uh, I, I, one day this week I was, I was talking to the Lord about certain things and how some were being challenged in some areas of their lives financially and otherwise and I just wanted to know just, I was just pondering it just, just not, not even praying about it and, and the Lord made it clear that there was judgment a judging and um so first of all, I was like, well, how can, how can that be that powerful that it can literally keep a person in a, a condition in spite of, you know, and it, it really concerned me. It really concerned me. And then he went on to say a couple other things. So, um, so what I'm, I would title this here, The Language of the Heart. The language of the heart. And I know um, when you think about the language, 
you know, we, we, we are accustomed to this English language, and so we speak and we communicate to one another through the English language, and some speak Hispanic, but for the most part, you know, we are Americans speak English, some, most of us. And so the language, there's a language that we speak, but then there is another language that we may or may not be too aware of, and it's that language coming from the heart that I believe the Lord was sharing and wanting to make us aware of it so that uh, we, we satisfy him in obedience. All right, so follow with me. Please don't, don't, don't let me lose you by going too fast or whatever, but I'll try to take my time. Now, we're talking about the language of the heart. The heart speaks a language, whether we are aware of it or not. Now, let me, let me go some scriptures here so you, you can uh, see what I'm saying. Now, turn with me to Genesis 18. And I'll take my time and just kind of go through uh, these and not to be too long. When you found it, say amen. <clears throat> I think most of us or many of us are familiar with the story of Abraham and uh, when the, God came to him to give him a word of his future and for his life. Um, it is said that at this point here, it was 13 years ago that God spoke to Abraham about what he was going to do. 13 years ago. But the time was like a year from the fulfillment of it when he came to him again. It's like nothing had been said. He, was, he just had to walk in faith. And even when there were no signs, he had to walk in faith, believing what God said. So like now, the, the, the timing of the initial part of the promise was, was, was there, like a, just about a year away. And so now he comes to him. This is the second or third time he comes in about in a few months. As the time drew near to the fulfillment of the, the first part of the promise, God comes back again to, to uh, either, I won't say restore his faith, but to, to encourage his faith. All right? So now he comes to him, and um, you know, he comes, and then here's the angels. Um, and Abraham is outside the tent, and then he sees them coming, and he recognized that they were divine beings. And so, uh, and then he wanted to do service as was customary. And so he went, said, "Let a, you know, let me let me fetch a, a little young calf and make it for you, and then let you so you can eat it." And you know, and so they said, "Go ahead and do it." So he hasted to do that. Just and uh, after which, verse nine says, and they said unto him, talking to Abraham, the, the angels talking to Abraham, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Abraham said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the man of women. Therefore, get this verse really clear. Therefore, Sarah laughed, where? With Innocent. That means you could not hear her laugh. She laughed with Innocent, saying, After I'm old, after I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? So it was like a nice little joke. She could, you know, it was too really good to be true. Now think of keep out, keep this in mind. Here the Lord is promised Abraham and Sarah something that their whole life they wanted. Think of something that you wanted all your life. And for some reason couldn't get it. Thirteen years ago, the Lord promised you that He was going to do it. I mean, try and imagine where they were. So even after 13 years, and then 
you know, they probably, it seemed like they maybe just says, oh, well, you know, maybe, I don't know. Because, you know, God had nothing to say all those years about it. And so now he comes to them again to reiterate what he said those years ago. And so he comes and say, where's Sarah? She's in tent. So about this time next year, Sarah's going to have a son. Just like he said years ago, right? So now Sarah is like 12 or 13 years older than what she was. First of all, she was barren, couldn't have children. So God put another 12 or 13 years on it, and then he comes and says the same thing. Now you've got to grasp what, what, how God is. God's different. He's, you know. Now she could have said about 13 years ago, well, I'm old. There may be a slight chance. I don't know that, that something like this is going to happen, but I kind of doubt it. But then put 12 or 13 more years on it, she could say, oh, no, 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 uh-uh, this ain't going to happen. So she did like most of us would. She just chuckled on the inside. <laughs> you know, basic looking. My Lord, he was like nine years older. <laughs> Can he do anything now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so then the Lord Remember now, it didn't, she didn't do it aloud. She was inside the tent. She just overheard them, so she just chuckled within. She didn't say it out loud, nothing. This was the language of the heart. Y'all hear me? And then the Lord said to Abraham, what would did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I have a sure to bear a child? He knew exactly what she was saying, which I'm old. Is anything too hard for God, for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. In other words, it's going to happen. <laughs> then Sarah did not, because now she, she, this is a little spooky. This is a little, wait a minute now. I didn't, I didn't say this thing aloud. I, I just said it within me. So now she's getting a little bit shaky. So then Sarah did not saying, I laughed not, because she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. So, so can you see the language of the heart there? She didn't have to say nothing. Her heart was saying something. And so the Lord was listening to her heart. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying today. Because the Lord was pointing, pointing, pointing out to me some things. How sometimes if we don't careful and don't understand these things. It can really hinder us. Okay, let's go to another one. All right. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 if you will. When you're there, say amen. I think most of you are familiar with these here, so I won't go into detail uh, a lot. But just briefly, this was the second generation. The first generation, most of them got wiped out because they didn't believe. They murmured and complained. So they didn't really believe what God said, that he was going to bring them into the land that was flowing with milk and honey. And uh, God wanted them to be a part of it. But they just somehow or another didn't believe God, and so they complained. And, um, but keep in mind, though, God meant what he said, right? All right, so now, let's see. Let's go to starting at verse 6. Thou shall, therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. All right. So the promise, he's reiterating the, the promise to them. What he promised the generation years ago, long time ago. So now here he's reiterating to the second generation. Just, I'm going to bring you in. I said I was going to bring you in, right? Verse 10, he said, Where, When thou hast eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he's given thee. Somebody said, be thankful. be thankful. Beware that you forget not the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I commanded this day. Now, all right. 
I'll just go ahead and read. I was going to try to skip, but anyway, let's when verse twelve. Let's when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, when your herds and your flocks are multiplied, your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you has is multiplied. Then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fire and serpents and scorpions and drought. Where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble you and that he might prove you to do what? To do you good at your latter end. See, this is the wisdom of God, okay? God never takes us through so that we go through forever and never see the blessing of God. This is always God's intent. If he bring you through, remember, he, if he takes us through, it's for a purpose. But we submit to the dealings of God, right? Because God's got a higher purpose. He always has a higher purpose. He always brings us to the point where he can really use us like he want to, right? That means sometimes we have to, he does things, allow things to happen that we can't handle so that we can learn to do what? Put our trust in him, all right? So he wanted to teach Israel how to walk with God in spite of things when he didn't see things going right, right? So he took them through and he showed them to them. He said, now this is what's going to happen. You know, you basically you're going to have goodly houses, your land, you're going you're gonna to have all sufficiency. You ain't going to lack nothing. But I just want you to remember, when this happens, don't forget me. All right, don't forget me. And then, but here's the point I want you to see. Um, verse 16, who fed thee with the wilderness in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble you and that he might prove you to do you good at your latter end. Verse 17 is a key verse. And thou, sh and thou say in thine heart, see, don't say it aloud. He said, and you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The heart has a language. So he's saying, uh, um, when you get to doing good, when, when, when all those years of struggling is over, you don't, you don't see it no more. It's like you're not living the life of Riley, but you're doing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? And he said, when you get in that, remember, you know, just, just put a check on your heart. Don't let you, don't forget me. Don't forget that you didn't get there by yourself. Isn't that right? I did it for you. And you know, so often I can imagine, and I, and I heard this, it's like, I seen some, some, some time when the ministry grows and other people grow and prosper, you know, they look back on those years, Lord Jesus, I don't know how in the world I made it here, but yeah, it was God, it was God, isn't that right? So God said, I, once I got, get you in the place where I, 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 you, I have you, so I can really bless you, then I'm going to bless you. That's the nature of God. All I ask that you don't forget when you get to prosper. Isn't that right? Because somebody said that's what he want to do for you. Now, whenever I see this here, I know that God is ready. And see, God comes this way several times. So remember now, when this time you look at somebody and say, now, this time I'm going to get this thing. He ain't going to have to take me through this again. I'm going to get what he needs. Isn't that right? All right. So, but there's a language in the heart. Okay. Now. Here's another one. Matthew 9, 20. When you're there, say amen. Okay, Matthew 9, 20. Verse 20 says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment because or for she said within herself all right she didn't speak it out if i may but touch his garment i shall behold jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort your faith has made you whole now see what happened was this woman in her heart okay like i'm standing here now in my heart, I'm saying, but you didn't hear me, really. I just said what that woman said. But you didn't hear, right? The woman said it in her heart. Her 
heart had a language. And when she spoke it, God looked right at the language that she spoke of faith, right? And he blessed her accordingly. Isn't that right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Come on, let's put God's hands together and thank the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, turn, if you mean, First Samuel 16. We're just kind of driving that home here. I feel like the Lord was sharing with us something that he, it was very important. First Samuel chapter 16. Now here is Saul, Samuel. God told him to go down and anoint Jesse's son for king, as king, right? So Saul said, well, I mean, Samuel said, well, how can I go? If I saw here about it, he's going to kill me. He goes, just tell him you're going to do an offering, a sacrifice to the Lord. So he did, and, and he wasn't telling him to tell a lie now. He, that's what he was, was going to do. <laughs> so God was just giving him more wisdom so he knew how to do it, right? So he went, to, and so when they asked him, he told them exactly that. And, uh, and verse 6 says, And it came to pass when they were come that they looked upon Eliam and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. See, Samuel had uh, uh, just his son to pass there. So, so uh, Eliam was apparently good and tall in stature, kind of well built, you know, and Look good, and so Samuel looks, oh, man, God's known, got to be on that brother. You know what I'm saying? You know, he looked on the outward, right? Yeah. Look what he said here. Yeah. The Lord, verse 7, said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I've refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man see it. Well, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks how? All right. Now, look at somebody say, keep that in mind. This is how God functions and operates. He blesses according. So what he was pointing out and saying and judging, we sometimes are not aware of the language in the heart when we judge people. To judge is to decide, to come to a, to draw a conclusion, right? And it also, in the original, it meant separate. And it's like a mental separation. So when a person judges, there's a change in his mental status concerning that person. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So what he's saying now, uh, judge not so that you won't be judged. There's a law in the kingdom that says, with what judgment you use, that same standard of judgment is going to come back to you. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I hope this is helpful because it really blessed me. So a lot of times people go all the time judging and not realizing the language of their heart. That that's what God is actually looking at. You know, let's say for example, if I'm doing, you know, if you see me come in every Sunday and everything. And I'm telling you nice truths and I'm doing just the opposite of myself. God's not even listening to what I'm saying. He's actually looking at the language of my heart. If I'm talking about my brother and sister talking about you, then he's listening to the language of my soul. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, so I'm sharing this because I feel like this is what God was sharing. And then sometimes there can be some judgment based on the childhood hurts and things that we've gone through, right? So if I'm bitter because of the way I grew up, then if I don't get, let God in there and get that bitterness out of me, I'll be bitter still throughout life, right? It's not God's intent. God does not want that to happen. And so he keeps pleading because he wants to heal us. And he wants to give us a better life. Somebody say better life. Better. This is why Christ died. That we might have life to the full. But we got to let him get down there to that area where maybe let's say maybe dad did me wrong. And I, I still hadn't really dealt with that adequately. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm just trying to make a point. Okay. All right. So now. Uh, that language, that language can still be communicating, going out, and I can, if, 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 if I judged my father wrong because he couldn't provide, and I decided my whole life is going to be based on not doing it like my father did it, 
I judged my father. I didn't understand enough about him, but I judged him because my father didn't adequately provide. And I felt like he should have known and he shouldn't have had all those ch children, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm on TV, I gotta watch it, but anyway. But I'm trying to make the point clear. I judged him. You know what I'm saying? I judged him as a child in my teen years. And so that judgment, I'm operating now. And so I swore up and down that I would not let that happen to me. But the judgment has me bound. The judgment has me bound. I can't go beyond because God said with the standard that you use, it's going to come back to you. So I'm trying to go above the standard and I judged him wrong. And God said, you got to deal with that wrong judgment first. And let me heal that heart so that you can see things from a different perspective. Isn't that right? I judged him based on the image. And God says, you got out of your role and you played the role of God. Anybody hear what I'm saying? All right. Okay, so the language of the soul. And then he said this year, he, he, uh, uh, he said, first of all, that we shouldn't judge. And then this, he said it's a language not perceived. In other words, basically he was saying that uh, we don't perceive that language. We, we, we haven't ascertained adequately the language of our heart. Do you know sometimes people can just be saying things and never listening to the content of this thing that is the heart that is coming from? Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, what he's saying, he, what he said to me is that, that um, it's basically important that we listen sometimes to our heart. Sometimes our heart may be crying out and saying things that we're not paying attention to. It may be trying to show us where we need some help. And uh, so, so he, said, he said it's a language not perceived. All right. Now, so uh, the language that's not perceived or not grasped or, not, or language that we weren't consciously aware of or come to realize or understand. Um, I, I look at the Corinthians church here. In, in Corinthians 11, 31, when, when they were doing, with, doing the communion, remember that? Anybody read that? When he said uh, uh, they, they didn't properly discern the Lord's body. And many of them were sick and weakly. And some of them even died early prematurely because they weren't discerning the Lord's body. So I went all the way back to Corinthians. In the first chapters in Corinthians, uh, he, Paul was saying how there were schism and division. So 